recent social research says that about half of the American population believes in God as described in the Bible. I have a feeling that number is soft because I think you'd have to go back and ask people to define what they mean by believe, what they mean by God, and what they mean by the Bible. So probably somewhat less than half of the American population has a really orthodox view of what God means, what the, sort of a system of theology that would define what it is that they truly believe. But it turns out that 70% of the population believe in angels. Now, it doesn't Again, we might want to ask, what do you mean by believe? What do you mean by angels? Um, but you can see why that might be the case, because we in the 21st century and late 20th century have co-opted angels very much into our, our, our entertainment culture. I mean, they're on TV and they're in movies and they're in books, and we, we see them all around us as these sort of gentle figures who bring us messages of, of comfort and encouragement. That isn't necessarily the way it always was. There's a professor at one of the Jewish seminaries who says that angels in the Old Testament were as likely, and this is a quote, to come to assassinate people or wipe out entire populations as to come with good news. Having just gotten done reading and commenting on Revelation, a little piece of which we just heard, I can say that there's some pretty scary images of angels bringing plagues and throwing things down onto the earth and causing earthquakes and all sorts of things. But it's probably worth asking what we understand about angels, we as followers of Jesus, and what that ought to mean for us. And I don't really think we should be holding on to touched by an angel and whatever the movies were that came before that with you know, angels who were you know, bumbling or who had feelings and fell in love with people or who were trainee angels and didn't know what they were doing yet. There are all these things that, that, that turn them into these, these, these human characters who just happen to have a supernatural job. I don't think that's what we're supposed to see. There is a good reason why every time an angel shows up in the New Testament, uh, that being usually opens with, do not be afraid, <laughs> because suddenly somebody has come to realize that he or she is in direct contact with God. If we are orthodox in what we understand, angels are about messages coming directly from God to us, and they aren't always going to be messages of good news. If we read Revelation, it seems pretty clear that God will make God's will known in whatever way and regardless of whether that turns out to be what we were hoping for today. So, when we come to celebrate the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels, which was on Monday, we moved it to today for this purpose, no, Sunday, I beg your pardon, it was on Sunday, we moved to today, um, we should see that, that there is something very good in this, the idea that God will communicate directly, will make known to us what God's will is certainly is good news, because otherwise we would imagine ourselves living in darkness and obscurity and never knowing exactly whether we were doing it right or not, whether we were following in God's footsteps, the footsteps of Jesus, fulfilling God's purposes in the world or not. There is something to be said for being told, don't be afraid. Heaven knows I spend enough time being anxious about one thing or another that if the angel just showed up in all its fierce majesty and said, don't be afraid and went away, I probably would take that as a pretty good message. But nonetheless, to hear the rest of the message is equally important, whether it is what we expected, whether it was what we wanted or not. So I don't think we should put ourselves in that 30% camp of people who apparently don't believe in angels. But perhaps we should be hoping that when the message comes, we will notice it. Perhaps we will not be so blind and so distracted that when some blazing, unmistakable message from God comes and is right in front of us, we will not dismiss it. That may be the best we can hope for in the, the, the strangeness that is the way that God works out God's purposes in us, through us, around us, despite us ultimately uh, with us if we are at all wise in the way that we uh, live our lives as faithful people. So let us give thanks for the glory of God that come among us 
in whatever way it may be, however mysterious, however terrifying, at least in some way we are continually brought into God's plan and God's purpose, are made aware of what it is God desires. Amen.